let's just say there's a reason why there are no floor uh, accessible box holders. So this is something that I made because, well, uh, I think it was a uh, filgonator. Wait, what the fuck? Okay, because there there was someone on the storage tech that uh, pinged me, and uh, because th there was someone that was asking for a floor accessible box holder, and well, I didn't have any, but I decided that hey, you know what, let's give it a try, and so I spent a little while doing this. Uh, I don't know if I'm if if I'll sound like I'm shit. Uh, by telling you how much time I spent on to this, I probably sank like three or four hours into making this. Um, don't let Hamter see it; he's going to disapprove. Um, so I've done the the basic minimum for the testing. I didn't do a bunch of uh, stress testing, but um, if we fill this up. Actually, I'm going to um, increase the sound a little bit and put some items in. So, first thing to uh, start off with is uh, the, the dispenser clicking, which is kind of annoying. And then the, sh the full shulker box is going to go into this cobweb. To make sure that we preserve the slice that uh, the box is in, then it's going to like go into the water and go uh, to the the actual uh, collection. Now <laughs> that's pretty fucking annoying, um, and it takes a while for the box to make it to the collection. <laughs> that's so stupid, but hey, it works. So, uh, yeah, if you wanted to make or use an accessible box holder uh, in the floor, there you have it. If you wanted to, you could even put one in the ceiling with the space that you have. Though you, you're going to check a little bit high in the sky if you want to put one there. Um, maybe, maybe it would be actually more doable. If you would only keep like uh, one chest of storage in here and into the ceiling box holder, then it would be pretty, uh, pretty good actually. Now, <laughs> okay. Usually I don't mind having a hall a little bit wider, but this is too wide. Like, fucking hell! I'm in the dead middle right now. This is very very wide and yeah it just needs to be carpet as well because we're right over the the actual wiring over here um which is a bit annoying but yeah so that's the thing i guess i can break it down um All right, so let's start with the uh, the actual uh, input for the items, I guess. So if you put items in, you're going to basically change the state of the filter over here, which is going to unpower this redstone dust that usually um, powers this node block, which um, locks this observer clock from clocking. That observer clock. Um, pulses through the rails that go over here to here and then they pulse into these uh, droppers to send the items into the box and unfortunately well they also pulse the dispenser which is not uh, powered by anything uh, in the meantime because well it's hard to make space for that and so yeah, it makes a bunch of noise, which is annoying. And if we end up with a full box and this hopper gets full, 
which uh, we can do. It'll take just a short moment. This converter is going to point into this block, which uh, sends uh, some dust in here. And we have this redstone block that keeps the power level at 15 over here. So that's our uh, signal strength 15 detector. So whenever um, this hopper is 100% full, this dust is going to increase to signal strength 15. That's going to QC power this piston. That's going to um, push the, this redstone block that is here in here which is going to basically trigger this whole chain of event over here which is going to uh, break the box and when it uh, pulls it back it's just going to um, it's, it's gonna do nothing all right so first thing that happens when we um, when we send a signal in here is that this is going to um, push in here, push this block in here, and that's going to stay in here for the duration of uh, of the reading of the full hopper in here. Um, this block is going to basically form the clock that we're going to need later, and that's basically our clock, which is going to send a signal to these walls by um, powering um, this trap door. That's how we can uh, actually send uh, the items into the, the box. Oh, because uh, I, I forgot to, to tell you. Uh, we actually disable the clock in here because it messes with the um, with the box collection because well if you have items that uh, are still trying to clock while you change the box uh, you kinda have to time it right and sometimes it doesn't want to time right so better just disable it and that's what I did um, so yeah we formed the clock and then we sent a signal to this sticky piston that tries to pull this uh, slime block and the way that this works is that when you send a pulse to a, uh, a sticky piston like this, it's going to send an update when you actually um, power it uh, to extend. But when you actually retract it, it's not going to send a, an update and the observer won't uh, notice that there's a change. Um, that probably happens because uh, the, the, the game code was made so that when the piston um, retracts, um, a block would usually retract and the block would provide the update. But if, like in this instance, uh, the slime is uh, push limited uh, it can't uh, send an update well that's that explains the whole thing and then we just uh, send uh, the pulse through a lamp over here and another lamp over here to extend uh, the pulse uh, length and then we send uh, that through a piston to get uh, multiple firings which is going to um, send uh, like a few signals to this uh, zero tick generator, which is going to collect uh, our shulky box. And if you've noticed how it actually worked, um, what the fuck? Guys, don't use this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, man. 
Uh, so yeah, we send the 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 composer with a zero tick in here with the observer on top to actually um, catch the shulker box. The observer makes sure that you don't uh, accidentally have the the shulker box that pops out of the the composer because that can happen. And then it just uh, just shuffles with the observer and the composer like that. Um, then make sure that we have the observer that's going to actually send uh, a signal to the dispenser to actually dispense the box. And yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I guess, well, there's also this clock that keeps uh, sending a pulse to this dropper in here which is uh, going to uh, eject the box that's here and put it uh, into these chests usually that's what would happen I don't know why it messed up when um, I put the items all in here that was pretty um, Sad. If I do this, bro, man, fuck my life. <laughs> okay, so I guess there's an edge case over here. So <sighs> don't use it. I guess I'm not gonna work on it uh, anymore. Okay, so just after the video ended, I um I had to basically check what happened and uh i first started by um changing these uh, timings on these repeaters and they were not the culprit for um the issue it was actually these repeaters um that removed the power from here a little bit too early and that um caused a um trigger of these um, rails a little bit too soon. Um, actually, I'm going to demonstrate it. Um, so let me put that to one game tick. Uh, two game tick, actually. Sorry. Um, let me just put a bunch of blocks in here. If you check carefully, you could see like the chain going from here to here, and that messed up the the thing. Anyways, I'm gonna release the schematic with that fixed.